Hello and welcome to episode 23 of Ask a Web Geek. My name is CJ Gilbert and I am your website safari guide. I help business owners and entrepreneurs through the jungle of the internet and help you get where you want to go. We found there's a lot of traps, there's a lot of hidden things, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, paths that want to take you away from where you go. Distraction. That's the word I was looking for, but I was distracted. There's a lot of distraction here on the web jungle, and I want to help you navigate around the distraction, over the traps, and get you exactly where you want to go with your web journey. So I've got folks jumping on the call right now. Hi, Jared. Thanks for jumping on. Uh, please feel free to leave me any comments that you like, ask any questions that you like, and I've got a great show here for you today. I want to show you our featured animal of the week is this little tiger guy. So here's my question for you. When you see the tiger, does this, which, where does your brain go? Does it go, oh, that's a dangerous creature that I have to look out for? Are you afraid of the tigers in your jungle? Or are you the tiger in your jungle? I would say you should be the tiger in your jungle. Don't be afraid about the tigers out there. You're the tiger. You, you jump into your jungle and you are the lion. You are the tiger. You are the king of the jungle this week. So the tiger encourages you. Don't be afraid of what you perceive as danger in your jungle, but instead be decisive, take action this week and think of yourself as the tiger in the jungle. All right, let's jump right over to the slides and get started with our show. Got some great stuff for you today. Ask a Web Geek with CJ Gilbert. That's me. I'm your web safari guide. And on this show, we say, what would you like to ask a Web Geek? You know, I help people all the time with their websites, but as we're going along, there's other questions. There's other things that you want to know about, and that's why we're here this morning. You know, I believe your website is your number one tool. Your website is your number one tool to grow and support your business. And if you think of it that way, it can enhance each aspect of your business. It can help you attract more customers, make more sales, enhance your customer service. Each one of these things in increases your efficiency and helps you save time and save money while serving your clients better, faster, and easier. I want to take just a moment and congratulate you. I know that if you're watching me this morning, you're the type of person that's ready to do something, ready to take action, ready to improve your business and your life. And that's the only reason you'd be here with me this morning. And so to you, I say congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the back. You're in the right place uh, taking action steps. So uh, I just want to encourage you, support you, and and let you know that I think that you're doing a great job. Ask a web geek. There's a there's a bunch of different ways that you can be involved in our show. First of all, it's our Facebook group. Come join our Facebook group. I'm streaming right now live into our Facebook group. That's where we record the show every week, every Wednesday, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. We go live into that show and we chat for a little while and then I hit record theoretically and start the show officially. So if you want to be part of our live taping, please join our Facebook group. You can also ask any questions anytime during the week by just leaving a post or a comment in inside that channel somewhere, inside that group, and I'll answer you on the show as well as encourage the rest of our community to answer you. We have a lot of experts here on a lot of different things. Subscribe on YouTube because after we tape the show in Facebook, a couple days later, I cut out some of the nonsense, add a little music, uh, and put it together for a show which then goes off to YouTube and also becomes a podcast off of our website, askawebgeek.com. So would you please subscribe on YouTube? Subscribe if you're a podcast listener on either Apple or Google. You can find the links on our website, askawebgeek.com, or just search your podcast player for Ask a Web Geek. Or you could even ask Alexa, hey Alexa, play podcast Ask a Web Geek. I really hope that didn't mess up something in your in your house. Actually, I kind of do. Let me know. And follow on Twitter. That's me behind the at Ask a Web Geek at Twitter. Would appreciate it if you uh, you could ask questions there. You could give us a shout out there as well. Uh, and if you're if you're watching or listening to the show anytime on YouTube or even as a podcast. Uh, tweet along. Let me know what episode you're listening to, what I just said that made you laugh or you agree with or you disagree with, and if you have any follow-up questions. So please feel free to join us in any of these places, and we look forward to uh, speaking with you there. 
Disclaimer, real quick disclaimer. You must be willing to have your question or issue addressed in a public forum. This is a public group, and then I release it publicly on YouTube. I just wanna make sure that everything that we talk about is totally okay with you that we're talking about that. If we need to obscure password fields or, or some back end of your website that we're looking at, of course we'll do that. So just let me know if there's any kind of concern like that. Otherwise, we're just gonna talk about everything totally openly and transparent so that everyone can get as much education and information as possible. And this is not legal or professional advice. I'm just a web geek. I'm a web dude that's been doing this for 20 years, so I know a lot about websites and about marketing and sales and customer service, but I am not an attorney, and you must have a licensed and insured professionals in your business portfolio. So make sure that you have an attorney, make sure you have a CPA, and those are the folks you consult with before you make any changes to your business. Remember, you accept responsibility for everything. Who am I? I'm CJ Gilbert. I'm the web geek. I'm a, I am ai call myself the website safari guide, and that's because I'm helping business owners through the web jungle with their websites and with their uh, marketing efforts. And and I've got a free course that I'll tell you about in just a few minutes where you can get all some, some of the basic ideas that I, I teach and I preach, but you're gonna have extra questions. And this is the place where you can come back and get those extra questions answered by me and by our, our amazing community. You know, I believe my business is serving your business. That's what I'm here to do. And I'm here to help you do more business and do better business. So that's why I'm here. Ask me all those questions and we'll do whatever we can to help you succeed. Be on the lookout for your golden nugget. You know, we've learned our brains are so interesting and we consume information on multiple levels. So each time you watch the show or you listen to me speak or you watch one of my videos, even the same one over and over again, you're going to get something different every time. That's because you and your brain are in a different place than you were the last time. So all you have to do is be on the lookout for your golden nugget and you're going to find it. Grab a sheet of paper, draw a line right down the middle, label the left side notes and the right side actions, and that way you can take your stream of consciousness notes down that left side as I'm talking, but then there's going to be certain steps that really stand out to you, and you can make note of that in the right-hand column. And make sure to star those golden nuggets, because you'll want to make sure to take quick action on those. Ask a Web Geek is sponsored by just a couple things this week. First of all, I want to tell you again, if you haven't heard, about this amazing series that Eric Laughlin is doing right now on Napoleon Hill and his success principles. I often tell you to encourage you to join his 15-minute daily motivational phone call. And over the last seven days, it's been focused on certain principles from Napoleon Hill. So if you want to check out that course that's still available to you, just use my uh, special link. Nap Hill. You don't have to spell out the whole word Napoleon. Just Nap N A P H I L L. Nap Hill. Dot Gilbert Studios. Dot com. Nap Hill. Dot Gilbert Studios. Dot com. There are seven 15 minute videos, and then there's also a two module course that Eric is teaching to help you put these principles into action. So check that out. Nap Hill. Dot Gilbert Studios. Dot com mywebsitesafari.com. This is the course I was referring to just a few minutes ago about the key principles, the key ideas that you can learn about your website and how you can learn to make your website work better, work more for your business. Uh, come to this course, learn these principles, and then come back here with any questions that you have. One of the tools I talk about in that video workshop is this free scan tool that I have available on my website. It's at scan.gilbertstudios.com. There's all these online business directories now, and you may not know how you and your listing and your business is appearing in those website directories. So you can use my free scan tool just pop in your business name, address, phone number, and it's going to do a live scan right there in front of you and show you where you show up and what pages and what directories and if, if there's any discrepancy in the information that you 
typed in between the address, the phone number, the business name. If there is, you'll want to make sure to correct those. You want to make sure all your listings are using the same information, the same correct information. And if you have any questions about your results, please let me know. Uh, once you run this scan, you'll find a button to contact me if you have any questions about it. Scan.GilbertStudios.com all right, buckle up and stay hydrated. I'm going to take a sip of my water and then we're going to jump into our featured topic of the week. So I was thinking, what can I present to you this morning? And I was thinking back over some of the conversations I've had over the last week and I thought it would be a really great uh, thing to teach you and tell you about images and using pictures on your website. So here I'm, I'm here to teach you a few ideas about how you can use pictures wisely on your on your website you know the what's that expression a picture is worth a thousand words but i don't want it to take a thousand hours to download on your website so we're going to talk about why size matters and i am referring to the size of images and i'm referring to it in two different ways that we're going to go into just a little bit number one i'm talking about the dimensions of that image like the height and the width of that of that image, okay? That's the dimensions I'm talking about. And I'm also talking about the weight of that file, how heavy it is basically when it sits on your on your hard drive, which directly correlates to how long it takes to download off of your website. So let's jump into those two pieces really quick. Number one, the size of your pictures, the dimensions of your image, the height and width. When you take a photo with your camera, especially if you've got a digital camera, you know, there's a lot of amazing digital cameras available today, and they're taking pictures in really high resolutions. And that's awesome. You want a really high resolution image, especially if you're going to print it, especially if it's going to be a big, beautiful portrait of your family that you want to hang on the wall. It needs to be as big and as much resolution as possible for the purpose of printing it. However, we don't want that huge file on your website. It needs to be scaled down to the purpose that you're going to use it for. So if you're printing an image, you want it to be as big as possible because you want that image to print as cleanly and as clearly as possible, especially if it's big. The bigger you want it printed on your wall or on the side of your building, the bigger that image needs to be and the higher the resolution. But websites are relatively much, much, much smaller than something that you'd print. So if you take that image, it may be great for print, but it is not ready for your website. And if you upload that raw image right to your website, your users are going to be spending way too much time downloading those images, or they may have errors, or they may not want to wait, and, and they're just not going to have a great experience at your website. So what I'm encouraging you to do is think about how you're going to use that image. Where is its final destination? If it's print, if you're having Garrison Fletcher design a flyer for you or some sort of print material or a booklet for your your class or workshop you want a high quality image because you want it to print really cleanly and clearly however if you send that same image over to CJ to put on your website I'm gonna pull that image into Photoshop and I'm gonna scale it down to just the right size for the purpose so let me give you a couple uh, a couple tips you can take away so the first thing I want to talk about is the size of your images. So I've given you a couple dimensions here. First of all, these are all in pixels. That's the that's the unit of measure that we use here in the digital world is pixels. That's what I use for websites and images on websites. We're talking in pixels. For example, a desktop monitor is about 1920 uh, pixels wide, whereas your phone your phone is only 360 pixels wide. So keep that in mind, right? The images that you're creating could be on both places at once. You want them to look really nice on a, on a large monitor, but you also want them to scale well for a mobile device too. So keep that in mind, 1900 pixels versus 300 pixels, basically 1920 versus 360. So here's a couple ideas. Here's a couple numbers you can pull away from my show today to help you scale your images down. So for example, pretty much the largest image we'd ever put on a website would be for a background image and that would be 1920 by 1280 again these are all in pixels 
So this is the height and width of your image. Great big beautiful background image, 1920 by 1280. Chances are n you'll only have maybe one or two or three of those size images. Everything else needs to be even smaller. So going down from there, 1040 is a really good uh, number. And by the way, if, if your images are perfectly square, then that means the height and width will be the same. If they're rectangular, then you're going to have a larger width and a smaller height. So for the rest of these, I'm just going to give you one number. Go ahead and scale that largest size to the one number and just let the other number be whatever it is. Okay, so 1920 by 1280 is the size of that desktop, the, the biggest screen you'll ever have. Then from there, 1040 by whatever. If you put in 1040 as the as the width, go ahead and let your software just scale it automatically and make that other number fit. So, so as long as we're scaling it down to the place that you're going to use it. Think about how you're using that image on your website. Does it is it a totally screen to screen image or does it typically maybe it's only on half the page or is it being used as a thumbnail or is one version of that smaller but then when you click it you can get the full image how is that image being used so here's some general numbers you can use scale it down to the biggest size that you're going to use does that make sense are you following the biggest size because you still want to have the highest quality that you can but you don't want it to be 3,000 5,000 pixels wide either okay so scale it down 1920 by 1280 is the biggest ever from there how about 1040 will that work 760 420, 250, how are you using that image? That's going to depend on which of those other numbers you'll pick. And then not only are, do we need to be concerned with the height and width of that, we need to also recognize it's a file and that file has weight as it sits on a hard drive, which is also how long basically it's going to take to download to your customer, to your user. So you also need to be concerned with the weight of that image. And the way that you can control this, it, let's say you pull it into Photoshop or some other photo editor, you can control the height and width, right? Let's say you, you, you've got an image that's 3,000 something by whatever, and you use one of my numbers and use 1040 or maybe 760, it's going to automatically adjust that height. And now you have your newly sized image. So now you're ready to save that image and there may be a save for web option. And when you do that, you're probably going to be saving that image as a JPEG. That's the right file format for most photo images. And what you can adjust now is what they call the quality of the image. It may be a slider. You may have a, uh, an adjustment slider. It may be like a zero to 10 scale or it might be a zero to a hundred scale. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use percentages, right? Instead of the 10. So 10 is like your a hundred percent biggest quality. And you're going to notice it's going to tell you the size of that file that it's creating. And that's going to be in kilobytes, KB or kilobytes. If you get up to megabytes, it's way too big. Megabytes is how that file is going to come off your camera. We need to scale that down. So adjusting the quality, you've already adjusted the dimensions of the image. Now you need to adjust the quality so that we get the right file size. So I might suggest take it right down to 80. See what that does for you. Uh, maybe 60, maybe 50, maybe 40. And what you're going to be looking at is you're going to be looking at the number of the weight of that file. And here's a couple things for you to compare it to. So Back in the day, when I first started building websites, one of the things we had to keep in mind was people was using dial-up modems, and we we had um, we were limited in the amount of file size that we could have, much more so than now. And we had to keep in mind that an entire web page, including all the images on it, had to be less than a hundred k. That was our approximate, you know guideline 100k was all the images that was going to load on one page well we can do a lot more now we've got a lot greater internet speeds so we're not quite as constrained to all of your images together being less than 100k so here's a couple uh, guidelines for you you're adjusting the quality slider 80 60 50 until you get it under these numbers so that great big beautiful image that i was talking about we still don't want it to be 
you know, we're balancing quality and size. So I would say you want that background. If you can get it around 100K, great. But if you really want that crystal clear background image to be so sharp, I would say not more than 250. Try to be under 250, okay? 100 to, to 200 maybe would be okay for that big background image. Again, it's a balancing act. And for a size, for that large size, you may be needing to scale it down to 40%, 30%. 20% to get that file size down. Uh, your big, what I'm gonna call featured images, maybe they're not quite as large as that full display screen, but maybe you have a slider at the top that's got some images in it, and you want those to be really crystal clear. You want those to be good quality images. So maybe you're looking for about 100 to 150K approximately. You really don't wanna go larger than that, especially if you have two, three, four, five of them in that same area that are going to load and start rotating. Really try to keep those around 100 to 150, if not less. And then if you have smaller images on your page or thumbnails or whatever, you can aim for maybe 60 to 80K for those. So these are just some guidelines. We're balancing two things. We're balancing the size of the image in dimensions, width and height of that image, and we're balancing the weight of that image. That is to say how long it's gonna to take to download from your website to your user. Okay, let me know if you have any follow-up questions about that. Let me know if that makes sense. Let me know if you're following that. Let me know if that, if that feels good, how I've explained that to you. And I wanna caution you, especially you business people, on where you're getting those images. I see a lot of people just grabbing images off the internet. If they're on the internet, they must be free, right? No, they're not. And I need, to, I need to let you know that you must respect the author of that work. If you write a book, you're the author of that book and those words, and no one can use it without your permission. Same with if you're a photographer and you take an image, no one else can use that image without your explicit permission. Now, there is a little bit of gray area when it comes to not business people. If you're in a church or a nonprofit group or things like that, you might have a little more leeway. You might be allowed to use certain more images uh, in that particular case scenario. But I'm talking to business people right now specifically. And if you're using images for your business and you're basically trying to make money off of it, you absolutely need to make sure that you have the right, the rights to use that image. So let me give you a couple tips. First of all, you could buy the image off of one of these websites like iStock or Shutterstock or there's a lot of stock photography websites. When you purchase the rights to use that image, you can use that image now. That's, that's the game, right? You're licensing that image for its usage, okay? So I wanna take with you uh, just a little field trip right now on a resource that I have where you can find some images that you can use. So let's go ahead and jump over to our web browser right now. This is the Ask a Web Geek website right over here. And right next to it, I'm gonna pull up, uh, what are we gonna call the, um, the name slipped right out of my brain. It's called Creative Commons. So I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna go right here to this website, search.creativecommons.org. So just really quick, Creative Commons is an organization that helps people properly label the usage rights of their images and other material, other media, uh, podcasts and, and other things too. So one of the great things that they offer is this tool, uh, search.creativecommons.org where you can search for images that you're allowed to use. And there's a couple check boxes down here. First of all, you're gonna wanna check use for commercial purposes. That means you're allowed to use it for your business. So check that box absolutely for sure. And then you may also wanna select this box, images that you can modify or adapt. So if you're gonna use the image and you're gonna create something with it, like a graphic, maybe for your social media profile or, or a marketing you know, campaign of some kind, you may also wanna go ahead and click that you want an image you can modify or adapt. So once you've selected one or both of those uh, check boxes, then right here, you can go ahead and type something. I'm just gonna type butterfly. For, for the sake of, of, an, of the experiment. 
and hit search. Now it immediately is returning to me over 10,000 images that I am allowed to use that people have specifically made note uh, with these license uh, keys right here that you are allowed to use these images and for use and for modification and et cetera, et cetera. And you can go through all these um, things over here on the side as far as where, where it's coming from and what kind of license it has and the file type and the aspect ratio and yada, 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 yada. But the, the bottom line is I want to encourage you that if you're using images for your business purpose, you either are purchasing the rights directly from the author or from one of the stock websites, or you're using a tool like this, which will help you find images that you specifically can use for that purpose. Let me know if you have any questions about that. And I'm just checking my comments and Farley is asking, do you have any resources for free images? Yeah, Farley, refer to the last 60 seconds of the show. <laughs> I think he asked that. Uh, I don't know when he asked that, but it was way before I answered it. <laughs> Garrison Fletcher is asking about file size. Should it be 72 DPI? Uh, yeah, great question. He's also asking about RGB and CMYK. So I'll touch on that real quickly. So um, typically, uh, Garrison is using terms that, 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 that are bridging the print world and the web world. So for example, DPI, that stands for dots per inch. And it really has to do with when you're printing something, how many dots are being placed within an inch. If there's 300 dots, that's a much better resolution, a much clearer image versus 72 dots. So when an image comes right off your camera, it may already be at 300. So one of those other factors besides the dimensions of the image and the uh, quality that you're saving is the DPI. So you could just adjust that DPI and it will change the other numbers for you. I wouldn't really have people worry about that too much, Garrison. He's correct that 300 is the standard for print and 72 is the standard for web. So if you want to and you see that box that says DPI and it says 300, flip it over to 72, see what that does to all the other numbers. That may adjust your dimensions for you. But I wasn't even going to worry about that with, with people today, Garrison, but I'll mention it because you mentioned it. RGB versus CMYK. That is the kind of color that is being used in the image. For example, uh, uh, CMYK is a print type of color. RGB is a web type of color. CMYK refers to the exact inks that are being sprayed on the page. Cyan, magenta, yellow, and K is black. It's a combination of those four inks that create every other color of the rainbow on, on, on uh, print. So it's different, different amounts of each one of those inks is what makes every other color that we see. So that's CMYK versus RGB. That stands for red, green, and blue. And it refers to the light shining through your monitor and producing the same color. So CMYK is a print color model. RGB is a web color model. And it really isn't something you have to worry about too much. Garrison and I will worry about that for you if we're working on your project. Otherwise, if you're pulling an image off the web, it's probably already an RGB. I would say uh, don't worry too much about that. Uh, focus on the dimensions, the weight of the photo, and most importantly, if you have the rights to use it. Uh, Garrison's also mentioning Pixabay is a great free image site. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've heard of that. Let me pull that one up over here. Pixa, nope, spell it right. Pix. Pixabay is a good, is also a good resource. Thanks for bringing that up, Garrison. Really good. Yeah, you absolutely can, can, um, can look for images right here. Let's do that same butterfly search and just see what pops up. Ooh, some really good images here. And let's really quick see what kind of, um, licenses are used right here. Free for commercial use, no attribution required. Two great resources there for you. I will have a link to both of those in the notes section. Thank you very much for mentioning that one. I, I'd, I'd forgotten to mention it, but I knew about it and it is a very good one. So again, you're checking what the license is and if you're allowed to use it. This one right here says it's free for commercial use and 
there's no attribution required, meaning you don't have to say this image by so-and-so. Some images you may find that that's on there. Um, and if so, you may need to give credit to the author someplace on the website near that image. Again, check the license specifics. But we're looking for images typically that are just like this, free for commercial use and no attribution required. Let me know if you have any other questions about that gang. Really good information. Hi, Katrin. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Okay, into the Ask a Web Geek portion. I'm going to really quick mention that we have all these conversations in our Facebook group going on. If you have questions, if you have answers to these, show, to these questions, come let us know what your thoughts are. We're talking about customer relationship management tools, project management tools, PR web. We're asking you for recommended offline resources to promote your business. Uh, books, resources, offline tools, chime in if you have any answers for these. Uh, last time on Ask a Web Geek, really quick, I just want to mention a couple things that we went over. So the very last episode, which was episode 22, I talked about creating a secure password that you can actually remember. There's a lot of great tools out there which will generate a secure password and remember it for you, and those tools are awesome. And yet, you may have a situation where you need to create password or multiple passwords and you need to be able to remember it. So use my formula, use my secret formula to create a password you can remember. Learn about that in episode 22. And in episode 21, I talked about how we could avoid the spam quicksand. If you're on the internet at all, you may have fallen victim to spam. It comes from two directions. You could be receiving spam, and I talk about a couple ways to avoid that. And you could also be accused of sending spam. And I talk about a couple ways you can avoid that. So check out episode 21 to learn how to avoid that spam quicksand. And in episode 20, I talked about some confusion around uh, all these multiple pieces that you need to have in your website, but you may not know where they are or how they connect. Your domain name, your website hosting, your email address, and then the actual website itself. How do all those pieces fit together? How do they all work? And how can you make sure you know what's happening? Check that out in episode 20, where I went over all those pieces and how they interact together. Not last week, but the week before that, we had this excellent question by Melissa. She said, how is it possible for an advertising company to run Facebook ads on my behalf on both Facebook and Instagram without originating those ads from within my ad account? I didn't know that technology existed, and I don't like that I can't view the actual ad spend. But yet the ads are posted on my behalf exactly as they would be if they'd originated from within my account. And I briefly said, you know, this shouldn't be, and I don't, I don't think they should do it this way. Uh, but I opened it up to our Facebook community to chime in, and we got some great answers, and I wanted to share those extra answers with you today. Uh, so one of our experts on Facebook, Janae, said, do you have screenshots or more information maybe? This should be impossible. Your page should be linked to your own ad account, and if you go into Ad Manager, you should be able to see your ads. Is the other company covering the ad spend themselves? And Yusuf jumped in and said, 100% agree my thought exactly. Melissa answered back and said, good morning. No screenshots to take. I'm familiar with Facebook Ad Manager. I just wasn't seeing the ROI and I began working with a company. I paid for their services. Part of the payment goes to my ad spend, $4.95 to be exact, according to them. Nowhere within my ad manager does it show the ads, only the past ads I've done. I think they're using some type of software that prevents their clients from seeing the ad spend. I requested full transparency. As she wants to make sure the full $4.95 is going to that ad spend. So that makes sense to me. Yusuf came back and said, some agencies only get access to a client's Facebook page and then use their own ad manager to run the ads. And this way, a client can't view the agency's ad manager account. I don't think this is a good strategy or practice unless they provide monthly reports. And that way, the client can match what is being taken from their bank or credit card. And Janae also said, what Yusuf said, I personally do not think it's a good idea for you to essentially give your page to someone else to link to their ad account. It just creates opportunities for misuse. Not that they are misusing it, just the lack of transparency is odd. And Melissa came back and thanked them both 
for chiming in. So I wanted to read you those updates. This conversation is still ongoing in our Facebook group. So if you have anything to add to that or you want to see any of the more comments that come, please jump over to the Facebook group and check it out. And then we had this question last week. Melissa was asking, what's the correct way to come up with your own Instagram hashtag? And I chimed in with a couple ideas, but was really curious to say what our community would say. And Joel jumped in and said, one way to do this is when you create a post after pressing that hashtag symbol, that pound symbol above the three, start typing a word and it will show you how often that word is used as a hashtag. I created a hashtag of my Instagram handle. So when people search for me within the platform, it will show me and all the things that I have posted with that hashtag. And Yusuf also jumped in and mentioned these tools. Use the following tools. Write tag, R-I-T-E tag, T-A-G, R-I-T-E T-A-G dot com, write tag, R-I-T-E T-A-G dot com to help you find effective hashtags and displaypurposes.com to help you generate relevant hashtags displaypurposes.com d-i-s-p-l-a-y-p-u-r-p-o-s-e-s.com so it's right tag r-i-t-e tag dot com and displaypurposes.com thanks everyone i really appreciate that uh, you jumping in with your extra comments and we're leaving that up in our announcement section to see if you have any other ideas to generate hashtags uh, either to find hashtags that are relevant to the content that you're talking about, or as Melissa might be specifically asking about, how to create a unique hashtag for your own brand that's unique. So please let us know if you have any other tips and suggestions on that, would you please? And what other questions do you have? Just like this, I invite you to come into our Facebook group or drop a comment or question under any of my posts online and let me know what you're struggling with this week. I'll do my best to answer the question, but as you can see, we have an amazing community of experts uh, and other geeks, other web geeks in our community that will answer your questions as best they can. And together, we're all helping each other grow. So come be part of our Facebook community and also please ask any other questions that you have about websites, marketing, social media, email campaigns, and more. If you're struggling with it and it somehow involves the web jungle, which I bet it does, we can help. So just let me know how we can help you and we'll do our best to do so. Ask a Web Geek. I want to remind you our sponsors one more time before I let you go. Number one, it's this Napoleon Hill series that Eric Lofholm is doing and you can get all the details at Nap hill.gilbertstudios.com. You don't have to spell Napoleon, just Nap, N-A-P, H-I-L-L dot gilbertstudios.com naphill dot gilbertstudios.com you're going to find that there was seven calls that went over the uh, success principles uh, from a Napoleon Hill and there's been a few more calls after that where we've talked about the other principles and he even created a two module course at, uh, learning to apply those principles to your business and create a plan at the same time really great stuff check it out naphill.gilbertstudios.com. And if you haven't already, go sign up for my free workshop. It's at mywebsitesafari.com. M-Y-W-E-B-S-I-T-E-S-A-F-A-R-I.com. Mywebsitesafari.com. This is my free video workshop, Five Keys to Unlock the Profit Hidden in Your Website. I want you to learn these core, core principles to think of your website like a tool to enhance your business and as a result, attract more customers, make more sales, and improve your customer service. Go learn all the ideas at mywebsitesafari.com and then come back here and ask any other follow-up questions you have. And one of the tools I talk about in my course is this free scan tool I have on my website. Scan your directory listings, see how your business is showing up online in all the different website directories that you probably didn't even know existed. Scan.gilbertstudios.com, S-C-A-N, scan.gilbertstudios.com. Totally free tool, totally transparent, in live time will show you exactly where you show up and then you can take actions to fix it. Let me know if you have any questions, send me an email. All my contact information is there. And what else can we do for you? 
All the links and details are at askawebgeek.com. Come on over to askawebgeek.com. You'll find all the links and resources and tools and previous episodes all compiled there f- uh, for you for your easy access. So just pop on over to askawebgeek.com and we'll answer any questions that you have. And you'll find all the links that we've talked about on previous shows and the sponsors and all that kind of stuff. And that is going to be our show for the week. You know, I'm so pleased that you've joined us here. I'm so glad that you're with us here and that you've taken just a few moments to join me here in the web cave. My name is CJ Gilbert and I am the website safari guide. I help business owners and entrepreneurs with their websites and marketing so that they can do what they need to do in their business. They can be the expert on what they do and they can allow their website to support their business, enhance their sales, enhance their service. And we've got all kinds of web tools and resources to help you make the most of it. You know, at Gilbert Studios, we understand the internet is a jungle. It's too easy to get lost and go down the wrong path. You want to hire a well-trained guide and join up with a tribe of people that can help lead you through and get you where you want to go. I hope you have a wonderful week. Wishing you the best week, the best website Wednesday. And we'll see you next week in the web jungle. God bless. Would you invite a friend? Uh, Share this link with the Ask a Web Geek Facebook group. Send that link to someone else. Ask them to join the group as well. And pick two or three friends that are in business and that could use this uh, service to help them and invite them to the group. Would you please? And please let me know how I can support you. Let me know how the others in our group can support you. And I'm so glad that you've been with us this morning. The Internet's a jungle. Roar! You be the tiger. You're the tiger.